morning. I ain't getting no sound. Let me turn that way. Mm -hmm. Sound, man. Get a mic out. How you doing, man? Good morning. Okay, we we are live now. Just want to know how we I went live. Uh, you got it too. Me too. Good. Good morning, Pastor. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. <laughs> good to see you there. It's just good to be seen. I was telling somebody at, on, at the job, I said, Four dying now that never died before. I hate <laughs> this, uh, and they ain't gonna die no more, and they ain't gonna die no more. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Uh, it's not the end, though, not the end because they'll live again if they ain't crying. Gee. That's right, uh huh. And yes, sir. Young lady said that death is writing a letter and it's mailing it every day, every day. Oh, how much are you already preaching? Yes. <laughs> and it's lying to end up in our mailbox without expecting it. Yes, sir. Mm. Good morning, Miss mm. Mary. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's, it's, let me see. I believe it's straight up nine now. Let me look at the clock here. Nine o'clock straight up. It is. Uh, we want to thank the I was having the father for allowing us to see another day. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, because we haven't been so good that we deserve this opportunity to be alive. But God, grace and his mercy. That's it. Spared our lives to continue on just a little while long. And, I, and I'm so happy and I and I'm very appreciative of that. That he allowed me to see you and you see me. Amen. Amen. Uh, lesson 12, May the 23rd, 2021, and our subject today is taking responsibility. Now, that's something we're going to talk about this morning. Our devotion reading is taken from Psalm 147, and it's a whole lot to read. Now, I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to double temp. I'm going to help y'all out this morning on reading all this stuff. I'm going to read about 14 verses, and we're going to tag team. Yeah. 15 through 20. Sister Mary, you pick that up, okay? What now? Psalms 147. Yeah. And 15. 15. Through okay, 20. that's about 15 through 20. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, and I was devotion, uh, devotion reading, like I said, the Psalm 147. Our key verse is saying, uh, it said, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth shall die. Ezekiel 18, 4, King James Version. And our scripture devotion reading this morning, Psalm 147. Pray ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord does build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the broken in heart and binds up their wounds. He tells the number of the stars. He calls them by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. Great power, his understanding is in infinite. The Lord lifts up the meat. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Yeah. Come to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises unto the heart unto our God. Amen. To heaven with clouds who prepares rain for the earth, who make it grass to grow upon the mountain. He gives to the beast his food, and to the young raven which cry. He delights not in the strength of the heart. He takes not pleasure in the legs of a man. 
The Lord take his pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of the gate. He has blessed the children within thee. He Amen. Peace in the waters and fill them with the fineness of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He cast forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causes the wind to blow and the waters to flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to, unto Israel. He hath not dwelt so with any nation. And as for his judgments that have not known them, praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mary. Uh, let's get ready right to our lesson. The subject is catch a hold to all of us. Taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of time, we don't want to take responsibility for nothing that we do. Amen. We all want to shift, shift mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And we know we should take the responsibility because most of the time, if not all of the time, the things happen because of something that we did. Amen. That happened to us, we bring it on ourselves. Amen. So Amen. Responsibility. If I go out and and just party seven days a week, my body is not going to remain in good shape. <clears throat> my physical body, not only my physical body, but eventually my, I'm going to have a mental problem. Amen. You know, because we have a this little uh, uh, finite mind we got sometimes. It, it, it's limited. So much we can take, y'all. Amen. So we got to learn how to take responsibility. We can't, we can't shift. Well, I, I wouldn't have did this if, if it had been for Sister Mary. <laughs> Sister Mary, uh, she, she can't milk now. That's it. No, it ain't supposed to make responsibility. You take responsibility. You went because you wanted to go. Amen. You got a mouth. You can say no. God give you sense, give you some common sense and use it. So we got to learn how to take responsibility. Let's get down to this lesson this morning. We're going to start the lesson. I even said, as a result of experience of this lesson, you should be able to do these things. Examine behavior in which we blame others as the cause. We need to examine hmm. that, y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How many times have y'all seen or heard for blaming somebody else in, instead of taking the responsibility for themselves? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, Max said, uh, <laughs> Max said that uh, uh, we need to do it this way. Matt once said, do it this way. No. Ain't no Simon said right now. You got to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we need to examine that. We need to examine our behavior and what we blame other as the cause. Quit blaming other for the cause. Blame yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's a commit to bring responsible for your own behavior. Mm -hmm. Your own behavior. Commit to being commit to being responsible for your own behavior. Good morning, Crystal. <laughs> and and we, we so happy. Good morning. I'm going to stop. We're so happy to have Reverend Willie Clyde Houston on. I Amen. A while ago, I think he cut his, cut his camera off. Though. Thank you, uh, Reverend Willie Clyde Houston, for tuning in this morning. Amen. Engage in responsible behavior that finds favor with God. We need to Amen. That's what we need to do right there. Engage in behavior that find favor with God. So God that God wants us to fear him. That's right. Not, not, not fear him like a booger bear now. It don't, mm, it don't that's mean right. That. It don't mean that. Fear him. Fear him. And when it comes to right and wrong, 
Mm-hmm. Kind of feel he he want to do he he delight, he like that for the children to feel him. You know. All right. Introduction. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let Sister Jill go and open up the introduction. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Our introduction. Good morning. Uh, children and adults alike love to play the blame game. Mm-hmm. Somehow it seems easier to blame someone else for personal flaws and failures rather than to take responsibility for them ourselves. Psychologists have identified at least three degrees of blame. Blaming something or someone else for one's outcome and consequences. Number two, blaming oneself for everything. And three, blaming God or fate for what happens. Mm -hmm. For many people, playing the blame game is a way of protecting one's ego without accepting responsibility for personal inaccuracies or weaknesses. The practice is certainly not new. It can be traced back to the Garden of Eden. It began with Adam and Eve, who both blamed someone or something else for failing to obey God's man. The blame game is more of a sin problem than a psychological malfunction. Amen. The sin nature refuses to see the fault in itself. A pattern of blaming can be seen throughout the Old Testament, fresh from slavery. The Israelites blame Moses for their suffering in the wilderness. The exiles during Ezekiel's ministry and those still left within war raised Jerusalem laid the fault of their exile on their father's sins rather than on their own spiritual compromise. They not only refused to repent, but also refused to even see or acknowledge any unrighteousness in themselves. In their blind arrogance, they dared to accuse God of injustices toward them. Ezekiel addressed this attitude by explaining that each individual is responsible for his or her own conduct before him. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm gonna say this again. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it in your hands for staples. Is that you know when you said something about Adam and Eve, that was a that was a blame game. God, really, I did it simply because the, the man <laughs> did, the woman did. <laughs> God already really told y'all what not to do. That's right. So you would you disobey God? Now you want to uh, blame somebody else for your uh, misfortune. That's right. Blame yourself because you knew. If if I knew if I know I already know if I go out there and jump off the top of that house <laughs> at my age now and probably I was young, I'm not gonna hardly be able to get back up. Amen. <laughs> hey, you know, I know better than do that. I can't blame uh uh sister Jill told me to go jump top of the house and jump off with. I can't blame but I know better than do that. So we can't blame nobody else. We got to blame ourselves to take the responsibility. For what we do, take responsibility. Uh, if I go out and uh, blow all of my finance, I I can't say that sister or uh, Mister Doolittle told me to go out there and buy stuff I didn't. That's eat. right. Mm-hmm. That's, it. That's it. And then I get back home, Alabama power, and I pull that big switch. <laughs> no one blame. That's right. So we got to kind of put our priority in respect. We got to put our put our life in order. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, Sister Staples. Well, Deacon Bell, you have summed it up, and um, it's so true. And you know, uh, just to reflect back on some things that you said, the blame game has been around ever since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. And you know, we don't want to. No ways that we want to take responsibility for what we do. And you know, a lot of times, um, even for our uh, spiritual shortcomings, Amen. Amen. we want to blame someone else. And uh, you know, we say, well, they didn't have that at my church. Uh, our pastor didn't tell us that. We know how 
to read the Bible, find things out for ourselves, go into prayer with God and ask him to show us some things. Right. We can't blame nobody. God has given us a mind and we always want to just throw the uh, blame on somebody else, you know, whether it's spiritual, physical, financial, or whatever you say. And that's as um, Christians, we got to start just taking responsibility. Yes, I did it. I'm repenting. I ask God to forgive me and I'm going to start all back over again. I can't do, say that. You know, I did, you know, my husband, he told me this here and that. I got a mind of my own. Right. I know what's right and I know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, even though if um, I love my husband, mm -hmm. but if I know he's in the wrong, that's it. It don't make me do that's wrong it. just it. because he's wrong. And, uh, I can't just say, because I'm not, I don't want to go to hell because of nobody. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have been caught up in that predicament. You know, we know better, but we won't do better just because. Even sometimes it don't even have to be your husband. It can be your friends. You know, your friends, well, I want to stay friends with so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, so I'm going to do this and that. We we got to take responsibility for our own actions. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to, but the lesson, this introduction really uh, sums itself up. But if we we'll just take it, you know, into account that we are all responsible for what we do. Amen. And I want to say to the one that just, just came on also, I'm going to give you our opportunity to say something. And uh, Reverend Houston, you are, uh, we, are, we don't mind you talking. Uh, I know you're new to our digital Sunday school, but you are more than welcome to put in uh to conversate with us on this lesson this morning amen uh anybody that want to say the same thing before we move forward i want to say something right quickly okay. um kind of piggybacking on what lady staples said about being responsible for your own actions one of the conversations me and robert always have is that it's important that we understand we have to be responsible for our own walk because amen. when it's time for us to meet jesus I'm going to be by myself. Robert ain't going to be there right beside me. So I, have to, I have to give an account for what I've done here on the earth. Amen. I got to give an account to God and he's going to ask me the hard questions. You know, he's going to ask me, what have you done with your life? Did you live out your God given purpose? Did you, did you live out the assignment I gave to you? And I'm not going to have no team that I can look around. That's going to co-sign with me. She's going to be crystal. That's so, right. The people of That's God, it. you have to understand that when you get to heaven, it's just going to be you. You can't blame nobody for your actions. You can't blame nobody for your mistakes. God is not going to hear about, well, I, God, I was trying to raise a family. I was trying to do this. I was trying to do that. But did you do what I told you to do? Because he ain't going to hear no excuse. Regardless, period. Like the young folks say, period. He is not going to hear any excuse. <laughs> and also... One of the things that brought to mind was this song. Y'all probably remember this song. The Christian and gospel singers used to always sing this song that says, if I don't make it in, it ain't nobody's fault but my own. And right. that is so true. That like so that true. was the song I, I always remember growing up is that if I don't make it in, it ain't mm -hmm. nobody's fault but my yep. own. And that lets you know that when you go to heaven, it's just you and God. <laughs> you mm -hmm. gotta get out. So we can't, it, it's important that we stop the blame game while we're here on earth because we're not going to be able to use that excuse when we get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Uh, brother teacher. Yes, ma'am. Choice. Choice. The word choice. Mm -hmm. We all have a choice. That's right. And if we, whichever way we choose, it is our responsibility to make the right choice. That's right. That's right. If we don't make the right choice, then we gonna have to stand on the choice that we made. Mm -hmm. Amen. And not blame anybody. I'm piggybacking off of what Sister uh, Salisbury said. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing that came to my mind. Go back to Adam and Eve. She had a choice. That's right. It's that snake didn't have, did not have a gun. <laughs> that snake did not have a knife. That's right. She had a choice. He tipped, he, all he did was tempt her. She had a choice to say yes or no. That's right. We all have a choice. Right. And you got to live by the choice mm -hmm. that you made. Mm -hmm. No excuses. No excuses. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you. 
And Sister May, I, I, I like how you brought that out. Now, something came, came to my mind then. We are a free moral agent. Mm -hmm. That's we it. have the right to choose. That's it. Between right and wrong, good and bad, God don't even make us do nothing. That's right. He That's so us. true. Because if he had made us do so, he wouldn't be God. That's right. He had choices. Choice. Adam and Eve had choices. He, he already told us what not to do. So the choice is for you. Are you going to do what I tell you? Or are you going to do opposite? Amen. He went opposite. When you go opposite from what God tells us to do, we have to pay the price. Man. Mm -hmm. Choices. I like that. It's all about making the right choice. Right, sure. Thank you. And one thing we can't say, mm -hmm. mama, mama may have drank coffee. Uh-huh. <laughs> Y'all hear me now. I, I, <laughs> you don't have to drink coffee. No. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You can get up in the morning and drink orange juice. That's right. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much, how, how much coffee is in that house. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can drink orange juice. Mm -hmm. You have a choice. That's right. Exactly. All right. And Anyone else? The floor is open now. I see my, I see the preacher man. I see the deacon on him. So y'all, the floor is open now. Y'all can chime in now. Okay. If not, we'll go ahead and read read the next part. Uh, Sister Crystal, would you read the next part for me? She's got to self mute, Miss. Uh, unmute yourself. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Start to talk. Okay, here we go. Analysis of the biblical text, personal accountability. Uh, Ezekiel 18, one through four, I'm going to read the NIV. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you people mean by quoting the proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this proverb in Israel. For everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Our view of God dictate, dictates our behavior and willingness to take responsibility for our own actions. Ezekiel 18 presents a glimpse of a people with a wrong view of God. Rather than accepting the truth concerning their own sin, they were determined to excuse themselves from personal accountability. In mm. doing so, they were flatly flatly rejecting God's sovereign right to judge and punish them. Ezekiel had previously delivered three messages condemning the nation for its sin, chapters 15 through 17. Chapter 18 records the prophet's emphasis on the people's guilt. He is responded to a, a popular and well-known proverb regarding sour grapes, which suggests their suffering was a direct result of their parents' sins and not their own. Verse 1 through 10. 1 through 2. They were really blaming God for punishing them unjustly. The proverb may have been derived from God's words in the Ten Commandments, see Exodus 20 and 5, Exodus 34, 6 through 7, and Deuteronomy 5 and 9, but its focus was directed at the serious, long-lasting effects of sin. God rejected their blame game mentality and declared that all lives were his, both the fathers and the son. Those choosing to sin were personally accountable to him and would die in their sins, verses 3 through 4. One's environment and upbringing, good or bad, does not remove his or her personal accountability for sin. We cannot blame others for our own choice to sin. We are aware of what God's word teaches. The church mm -hmm. must intentionally teach this truth, confront sin, and lovingly embrace those who acknowledge their sin and repent. Amen. I'm going to just say something in a minute. Because I was listening yesterday on my break at work. Reverend Stacy Bell, he said something about sin. And he made an example. He said, when his father passed away, and it's on the death certificate, it said this, that, and the other. And then he broke it down. I, I said, I boy, look, listen to Stacy. He said, that didn't really why he died. He died because of sin. Mm -hmm. And I like the way he brought that out uh, yesterday morning. So mm -hmm. I, had, I had my breakout list of silent school yesterday morning at work. All right, Chris. 
well, as I was reading this, it was talking about, you know, people, I guess the people were talking about how they were paying for their parents' sins. And a lot of times we use this, this blame game. And I, I, what makes me think, it makes me think about generational curses. And a lot of times people will say, well, the reason why I'm like this is because my parents were such and such. Hey, or the hey, reason why hey. I do this is because my parents did that. Ma'am, <laughs> sir, you cannot blame your parents, your grandparents, your cousins, nieces, and nephews, what have you based on your own choices and your own decisions. Just because mm -hmm. you come from a, for instance, let me use this example, just because you come from a line of alcoholics don't mean you can be, doesn't mean you're gonna be that's an alcoholic. It. That's, that's, that's a choice. That's no, one, no one puts that bottle in your hand, turns it up and makes you drink it. That's, like, right. that's not how this works. <laughs> so you have to be intentional about the decisions that you make. So exactly. we can't blame people Exactly. We can't blame these generational. I'm like, don't get me wrong. Generational curses do exist, but we can't yeah. use that as a scapegoat for exactly. the decisions that we make. So mm -hmm. it's important that we have to, if we know that generational generational curses occur in our lineage, it's important that we go to the Father and we pray on that thing and we, you know, and ask people to intercede on our behalf so we don't fall into those temptations. But in the end, we can't blame people if we do make those ultimate decisions. That's right. Amen. And that is so true. This, this thing is, is spiritual. It's a spiritual warfare. It, it, it's not mm -hmm. uh, uh, what we said that I inherited this from daddy. I inherited it from mother. No, no. It's a spiritual warfare. We, we fight it. We fight something. We mm -hmm. fight, we're not fighting really against flesh and blood. But the thing is, it's, it's higher than that. It's, it's, it's right. That's that. right. That's it's right. It's higher than that. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and spiritual weakness in, in higher places. Mm -hmm. and we wrestle against the devil. Amen. Amen. And he's a spirit. But we got something to fight it. We can't fight with flesh and blood. We can't That's fight right. with life and gun. Amen. We got to fight with the word of God. Amen. To able to overcome this battle that we in. It's spiritual. Mm. It's not. It's not physical. It's spiritual. Amen. If we fight it right and fight with the right tool. We're you gonna win. That's right. That's it. We're gonna win. Let me say, I'm gonna move on. Do you remember when the when the devil tried to fight against God? Took him out mm. on high plane. Oh, yeah, if you do this, and just jump. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't come to that self me. You, you don't misquote the word with me. That's I it. am the word. Mm -hmm. I'm the light, the truth and the light. You don't you don't misquote it with me because I can put you back in your place. Mm -hmm. If if you ain't God, if you know the word, the devil can't stand against you. That's it. I don't care how he twist it. That's it. He can mm -hmm. twist it any way he wants to, but he'll be able to stand against you if, if you know the word. So That's we right. can get in the word of God. And once we're in the word of God. We can fight against the principality, the spiritual weakness in high places. All right. mm -hmm. Anyone else? I also want to make a joke right quick. We were talking about the coffee drinkers. Both of my parents are coffee drinkers, and I won't touch none That's of it. <laughs> I have no desire whatsoever mm -hmm. to drink it. So that I lets you know that it's, it, it's, it's a, the thing is, it's a choice. And it's, it's also true. a mindset shift. You know, and it, now, there's nothing wrong. I'm just being funny. I'm just being funny. There's nothing wrong drinking coffee, but with the end of the day, people have to understand we make we make our own Boy. choices. We have our own work. Just because somebody did something doesn't mean we have to do it. You know, if you have no desire to do it, don't do it. You know? Mm -hmm. Can I say one thing too? Do y'all remember when we were when we were young? Crystal may not have played this game. Dodgeball. Yes, ma'am. I do. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember dodgeball? Yes, yes. That's what we do. That's we right. dodge <laughs> responsibility. That's right. We dodge accountability. Mm -hmm. We see it coming. We duck. Mm -hmm. When somebody confront us with something, we duck. Mm -hmm. That's right. When we know we've done wrong, we duck. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You can't, but at the end, you can't duck. That's right. Mm -hmm. You go, you know what, what the old saying is. You stand on your own bottom. What is it? The 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 every, the, the, every toe. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Every tub has got to sit on okay. their own bottom. That's it. That's right. There is no way we can get around it. I don't care if you're 90 years old. You and before you leave here, 
You going to reap what you sow. That's right. Yeah. You said something, man. You said mm -hmm. something. And you it's can't come up again. What else? And I think also we have to realize we can't think that we're so different. You know, some people will say, well, it's if I, okay, just because it affected my parents, if I do it, I'm different. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's where the mind shift has to, has to happen because just because, let me just, how should I put this? There are certain things that's just not for you and you just have to make peace with that. And you have to understand that that's, that's not God's will for your life. You are not different. It's just not meant for you to do it. And we have to, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes. They're thinking, well, well, it was a stronghold for them. It ain't going to be a stronghold for me because I'm different. No, nah, not necessarily. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is so true. You, you don't know what's a stronghold for you until you try and then you hook and then you have to deal with a whole different set of issues. That's right. That's it. Look, look like when we get should get older, we should learn better. better. That's right. And, and do better. Yeah. Mama said this now. It's nothing no worse than an old food. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm Lord have blessed me to be 60 years old this year. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go out there and try to do what 22 years old do, no I ain't never really, I never an old fool. That's it. <laughs> Think about it. That's it. That's true. That is so true. That's why I want us as men to quit saying we can do what we did when we were 22. <clears throat> quit fooling yourself. Ladies, too. <laughs> quit lying to yourself. Yeah. Ladies, too. Yes. <laughs> That's not me. I'm just speaking on the men because I know I've been a man. I'm a lady. <laughs> but quit lying, but Mama said, don't say give a move. But mama said, old food is the one kind of food. So I right, let yes. move on. All right. What do you think? Uh, Sister May, you want to read that? What do you think? Yes, ma'am. How does knowing that God holds you accountable for your own sin affect your attitude? Regarding obeying the scriptures, it should affect you. Yeah. Because you know you're going to be held responsible. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing as when I was raising my children, I expected them to make their beds. Mm -hmm. That's this is just an example. That was the expectation of them to make their beds. That's just one thing. All right. They made their bed because they knew the consequences of not making the bed. Mm -hmm. They don't make their bed now because they grown. They in their own house. Mm -hmm. They don't have to make their bed. They make their bed, but they don't have to make their beds. All right. But if, if you give, if God has given us instructions that we are to follow, his expectations is for us to follow. Mm -hmm. If we believe in him, you should love your neighbor as yourself. You know what the, what, what the expectations are. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Then you are expected to. So we should, we know we are going to be held accountable. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Personal integrity. That's what you want me to read to? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before I go any further, let's talk about integrity. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, that word seems to have slipped through the cracks as we... Mercy. As you know, as time goes by, mm -hmm. we talk about moral principles. Yes, yes. We we act like we can do anything, mm -hmm. especially in the world today. You know, we can't do anything. Mm -mm. We have to have some principles. That's right. Yeah. We have to have guidelines. Mm -hmm. We got to do right. What happened with doing right? And this is what our lessons, we got to have a, per, it's got to be personal. Mm -hmm. Personal. We can't look at nobody but self. That's right. You look at self as what you are doing. Mm -hmm. NIV version. Suppose, now this is a parable okay. and y'all, you need you need to read the whole chapter. I just I just want y'all if you if if when you not if 
when you take the time. Okay, okay. When you're sitting in your comfortable chair oh. <laughs> with your feet up, get the word of God. All right. Turn the TV off for just a few minutes. That's right. And read chapters 15 through 17 and all of chapter 18. Mm -hmm. It's enlightening. So this is part of the parable that Ezekiel, that, that the God gave Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. He said, suppose there was a rich, a righteous man. All right. Who does what is just and right. Mm -hmm. He does not eat at the mountain shrines or look at the isles of Israel. He does not defile his neighbor's wife or have sexual relationship with a woman during her period. All right. He does not oppose, oppress anyone, but returns what he took in pledge of a loan. Okay. He does not commit robbery, but gives his food to the hungry and provides clothing for the naked. He does not lend to them at interest All right. or take the profit from them. He withholds his hand from doing wrong and judge fairly between two parties. All right. Then it says he follows my decrees mm -hmm. and faithfully keeps my laws. That man is righteous. Mm. He will surely live, declares the sovereign Lord. Now, from 9 through 30, mm -hmm. read it. I'm okay. serious. Read okay. it. Read it sometimes. The principle of personal accountability for sin is illustrated in three examples. In, Isaiah, in uh, Ezekiel 18, 5 through 20, there's three different examples. A righteous man doing right, a, rick, a wicked son of, the, of a righteous father, and a righteous son of a wicked father. Mm -hmm. I want to stay. Can I stay there for just one second? Stay, stay right there, sister. Now, you can't blame, and you know we've seen this. You cannot right. blame. You, you are your own person. All right. Mm-hmm. And and Crystal said talked about drinking, and you know we we talk about drinking because that's just something that that we see people do. Right. But seeing some some of these sins like lying and 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 all this kind of stuff, we don't talk about as yeah, as that's, much. That's right. Mm -hmm. But if your daddy was a liar, <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to be a liar. No. Mm -hmm. But you have a strong tendency to be a liar. That's right. And if you know you have that tendency of being a liar, you need to stay further away from lying as you can. Amen. See, that's okay. that's what we don't do. Mm -hmm. We, I, I'm a, I said, let's say my daddy was a liar. Okay. I'm just gonna give in the lying just because I knew my daddy was a liar. Mm -hmm. That's not way we do stuff. And then you see, uh, a bad father mm -hmm. that lies. And that son absolutely refused to lie. Then you, you know, you, you had it both ways. Mm -hmm. And that these are the examples that the Lord gave uh, Ezekiel okay. in these other verses. They gave three examples. All right. A good, a good daddy. Mm -hmm. The son uh, did wrong. Then a bad daddy. The son did right. Okay. See, you you look at these things. That's right. And you have to, you have to, you know yourself. You know, and that's how we need to break the chain. We mm -hmm. need to break these chains. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Of being an alcoholic if your dad was an alcoholic. Of being a homong if your mama was a homong. Okay. That's right. You All know, right. break the chain. Mm -hmm. The chain can be broken. I'm going to finish mm -hmm. reading now. Um, Ezekiel 
describes each individual actions and God's response to them. The first case describes the action of a righteous man who followed God with all his heart. This hypothetical man was not guilty of the rampant idolatry being practiced. He faithfully maintained sexual purity, sought to help rather than oppress others. But God's law approved financial gain and was confident compassionate and faithful in his dealing with others. God's conclusion was that this man would be spared from judgment and would not suffer because of the sin of others. Mm -hmm. For believers today, this pro profile of a righteous man is synonymous to visible spirituality. Mm -hmm. Visible spirituality is doctrine in practice doctrine in practice. We got to practice these things. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is living out what we know and believe about God's word. God still, look, God still looks for spiritual and moral integrity mm -hmm. in the lives of every believer because it is the visible evidence of a transformed life and a powerful witness to the unsaved. Mm -hmm. We got to see. We got right. to see that this person is a changed person. You got to show that God is in you. Mm -hmm. That's the only way the sinners is going to see God is through us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, right. if, if that person is going astray, cannot see the Jesus in us, then we have failed. That's right. That's we right. have failed. And we have got to have integrity in our life. We got to have some kind of moral and spiritual integrity. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to jump on that? Say anything about that? Okay. All right, then. Uh, let's move on. What do you think? Uh, Jerry, I'm going to read that to personal responsibility. Okay, personal, what do you think? Do you think the church places adequate emphasis on preaching and teaching the necessity of holy living? Explain briefly. Uh, you want to say something? That's it. Yes. No, now, not all, not all local churches, but I'll say this now. Sometimes we spend too much on what you call it, uh, 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 what you call that word, you uh, about rate being uh, being a lot of money, uh, prosperity, that's prosperity. The that's the that's word. The word. Mm -hmm. We put on prosperity, and sometimes we want to talk about old Mac Bell, Mac Bell out there doing things I've been doing. Make bail got a big checkbook. Mm -hmm. You know, don't say you don't know it. That's right. I don't know That's what right. Mac doing. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, 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 you know what I'm doing. Don't, don't, don't come saying you don't know, but you can't talk on it because you say you're going to make me mad. And mm -hmm. I'm that big checkbook I got to put back in my pocket and I'm not going to write it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So instead of you uh, preaching on Making me saving me from hell, telling me that what you're doing, you got to get, get it right, Mac Arthur. Mm -hmm. But you, you you neglect that because of oh, other stuff. Okay, go ahead. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And one more thing. Uh actually, um, I don't know what I think it was Robert's uncle, he's a pastor in Florida. He made a comment. He says the reality is if you live right, you're gonna prosper. That's Amen. That's <laughs> Amen. Don't talk about that part. So they always talking about the money, and ain't the nothing. You know, it's important to have money because money is a tool. It it helps us accomplish things. But the reality is, if you live right, you will prosper. You will prosper, and that's true. That is so true. Mm hmm. Okay. Um. Personal, personal responsibility. Uh, I'm going to read the NIV version, verses thirty and th through thirty-two. Therefore, you Israelites, 
I will judge of you according to your own ways, declares the sovereign Lord. Repent, turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Uh -huh. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, people of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the sovereign Lord, repent and live. The principle of individual responsibility for sin was explained and proved by Ezekiel through a variety of hypothetical case mm -hmm. studies. Mm -hmm. And that's in verses five, through 29. That's it. That's it. The conclusion was that the people of each generation are responsible to God for their personal response to his commandments. Ezekiel concluded his argument with this summary. A just God must judge each person for his own life. Verse 30. The solution for Israel was to repent and turn from their transgressions. Mm -hmm to avoid the righteous judgment, verse 30. This requires spiritual renewal, a new heart and a new spirit. Genuine repentance occurs from the inside out in the yeah. lives of those who change their rebellious attitude toward God. This was an individual call to repentance because, because the life of death of the people Wait a minute, depend on their individual responses to God's word. Mm -hmm. God's desire was that they would choose life by repenting because he took no pleasure in the death of anyone who refused to turn from their sin. Mm -hmm. That's in verse 32. God has not changed. He still calls every true believer to repent and turn to him. The message of individual accountability is still relevant today. Our nation is suffering because of the far-reaching effects of sin. Mm -hmm. The church must take a stand for righteousness Amen. that challenges both the believer and the unsaved with the principle of individual accountability for sin. The blame game does not work with God. Amen. Ooh, wait, that is so true. The blame game Amen. don't work. Now, God don't say, I say, God don't take no pleasure in mm. sin and losing our soul. Mm -hmm. He don't take pleasure in that. Mm. He don't take pleasure in that. And that we as individuals, mm -hmm. if we sit back and no stuff is wrong, especially, especially leaders. I'm, talking, I'm just not talking about preaching about leaders in all over. Leaders yeah, in the gym. Amen. We sit back and, and don't say nothing. We take pleasure. That's right. We take pleasure That's in right. that sister or that brother going to hell. That's, mm -hmm. That's we right. Won't, we won't sit there trying to deter them from going down the wrong path. Amen. Exactly. I just like a, a child. You see a child doing something and you don't thank him or get at him about it, you take taking mm -hmm. pleasure in him doing that little thing. You think it's funny. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You take pleasure, you know. Now, I, I'm talking about now. I know it's, it's this day and time. You can't be whooping and too much saying that to your own children. Now, I know that you got to be very cautious with that. But your own children, now to give them so. And you can tell them, though. You can tell them. And sometimes they might still want to jack you up, but you still tell them. You tell them. <laughs> And, and walk away. Yeah, walk away. Mm -hmm. There's no confrontation. We're just speak it and move on. That's you right. You did your part. Mm -hmm. If we don't do, we taking pleasure. Like we taking pleasure and put by going down the wrong road. All right. Let's take a thing you want to say on that. Okay, but uh, this really too explained itself. You know, like you said, we have got to take responsibility for what we do, and then when we do. Uh, commit whatever sin that we have uh, committed. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that we got to repent. Mm -hmm. Repent. Feel godly sorrowful mm -hmm. for what we have done. Man. Go to God. And then, you know, in um, the book of Psalms, be like David. Mm -hmm. Pray and ask the Lord to create in me a clean a heart. Clean heart. Mm -hmm. And then renew the right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. You know, until we pray, we repent first, pray and ask God 
to creating us a clean heart. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we are really taking responsibility for our own actions. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if God created us a clean heart and renew the right spirit, we won't continue to do that mm -hmm. or whatever he was doing. We can't Amen. shift the blame on nobody else because it wasn't nobody else that did it, but me. That's right. I can't, I'm not going to try to shift the blame on nobody. I said, yeah, I said, you know, I'm going to ask God to forgive me. Amen. Pray, ask God, you know, to take that away from me that I won't go down that same path again. Amen. Won't go down that same road again. And so as Christians, that's what we will have to do and what we're going to have to do. And uh, that's the only way that we'll be transformed spiritually, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you say, we want to not even shift. We can't, we can't shift the blame on yeah. nobody. We know what we are supposed to do. Yeah, and right. especially as teachers, ministers, and Christians, yes. leaders. Leaders, leaders all over. Mm -hmm. We've been taught we in the word, we study the word. We know at least once a week, but we should study it every day. Yeah. But we are into the word. We know what the uh, word tells us to do, and especially in these lessons that has been taught. We should, we should obey the word and do what the word say do. And that way we know that we can be able to take our, take responsibility for what we do. Okay. Thank you. Look about that, that word ego. We said that, I was, I was mentioning earlier, ego. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the problems. Amen. That's it. Yes. Go go ahead and define that word. I just want y'all to define it for me. Ego. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> pride. Pride is one thing to call. You know, uh, it's okay. it's a uh, synonymous to the word <laughs> pride is. Okay. Okay. Self esteem. Self. -esteem. Yeah. Okay. 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 You know, we like to boost that ego. We like that ego boost. It makes That's us right. That's right. Mm-hmm. And you know, we 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 don't go on an ego trip so so much that so much. What we what we do, and then wrong with it. That's, That's right. right. It's 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 wrong. It's to the fact that it's right. That's Our right. It's right, and we but the Bible tells us plainly it's wrong. It's, it's right. right. But because of who I am, mm. or who I hang with, who look up to me, mm. my ego, I'm ego tripping, y'all. That's right. Okay. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Okay. People who are ego tripping tend to have a lot of insecurities, and they yes. use their ego oh. to hide. You said something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've witnessed it too many times. They, mm -hmm. they they have this this pride about them. They they this and they're that. They have these egos, but the reality is they they deal with a lot of insecurities. But they use their ego to hide that. But they mm -hmm. won't tell you that. They ain't gonna tell you that part though. That's right. <laughs> That's, That's that comes from that comes from discernment and really seeing people for who they are. Mm -hmm. And I want to say something too. Go ahead, sister. We all struggle with something. Yeah. yeah. We, all, we all struggle with a sin mm -hmm. or some sins. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's why we have to continually stay in the word because if we don't, if you get slack in that word, that's right. That devil, I mean, he's on us anyway. Mm -hmm. Point blank. He's on us anyway. But if you get slack, in that word and in your prayer life and in your communication and in your meditation with the Lord, mm -hmm. he all thing he needs is a crack. That's all. And I'm talking about <laughs> everybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. There are no exceptions. Amen. That's what we we as Christians we walk around we walk around as if mm -hmm. the devil can't touch me. Mm -hmm. As if I got a halo on my head. Mm -hmm. All right. There is no halo. We got to continue to confess our sins. Mm -hmm. Ask for forgiveness. But it but once we get knocked down with sin, we get up mm -hmm. and continue the race. Mm -hmm. That's right. Shake yourself off with the word. And mm -hmm. continue to move. That's right. Don't stay down and wallow. That's right. 
if you do that, devil got you then. He got okay. you. Mm -hmm. You can holler, bless, and highly favor all you want. Oh. <laughs> you can I holler to the top of the roof. Mm -hmm. And highly favor. I see that. That's physical. I see that. Go ahead, Sister Faithful. Okay. I just wanted to say, you know, going back to what you asked what ego is. Uh -huh. Ego really is someone who's just so full of themselves. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's just full of yourself, you know. <laughs> and that's a person who, you know, ego trip. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm telling you, y'all, this Facebook and these picture taking and all of that. <laughs> Come on with it. I love myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And let's take this picture this way. Yeah. We have got to be careful. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't ask for y'all. I don't just say, I don't just say. <laughs> we can have anything too far. It's good, but, yeah. but don't don't let that get in your in your mind, in your That's brain. Right. That's right. That's right. You're right. <laughs> and we got to be careful. I'm serious. That's right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And sometimes these little sins, what we call little, the all sin, God knows. But these little things that we do, the little things that we do, that's right, causes sin. It does. And that is, and that is exactly right, though. This is amazing. I like that. The, the, how y'all define that word ego? That's that is so true. All right, we'll continue to move on. Uh, flow still over. We've got a few more minutes there. Anybody, anyone else? I've got the, I'm still got the preacher and the deacon. Y'all, uh, all right, deacon, hi. Would you like to read the next part for me? Yeah, deacon, hi, I believe, yeah. All right, let's go. Crystal, would you uh, take the next part of closing for What do you think closing thought your life and your world and closing for that? What do you think? Why must the need for personal spiritual transformation be taught? Um, it has to be taught because a lot of people, let's just be honest, everybody wasn't brought up in the church. So we can't expect people to know and understand spiritual transformation. So mm -hmm. it has to be taught in order for people to live a life, not only that's pleasing to God, but live a life that is transforming living a life that is fruitful. So we have to teach that, uh, whether it be in a setting like Sunday school, whether we, you know, we're taught in Bible study, what have you. Um, Cause in order for people to really elevate themselves in Christ, they have to be able to do spiritually transform their life. So, mm -hmm. uh, and of course we, we, we want to be able to produce future generation of Christians to carry out the legacy, you know, for years to come. So that's my thought on that. And before you go forward, let me tell you a question. I like what he said, what must we need for personal spiritual transformation to be taught? The Bible is a, is a book. Yeah, yeah, I don't man. care where you at. I don't care what setting you in. It's always in order. Mm -hmm. You can be in the club. You can be, I don't care what you're doing and where you're at on your job. It's always in order. Yeah. You, can, you can never can say that the Bible is out of order and it said it's always in order. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, dude. All right. The closing thought. Playing the blame game is dangerous when it comes to one's spiritual life. God requires personal holiness from every believer that is independent of anyone else's actions. He holds every living soul personally responsible for his or her own sin. God is holy and sin is a serious matter to him. Those who claim or desire a relationship with him must commit to holy living and present themselves daily to him for continual spiritual transformation into the image of his son, Jesus Christ, your life. This week, commit to taking a personal inventory of your personal relationship with the Lord. We are quick to dismiss our sin as insignificant or to make excuses for it. But as God observes your behavior and attitude, what do you think he sees? Identify an area of disobedience, own it, confess it, and seek his help through the Holy Spirit to overcome it. Your mm -hmm. world. A quick review of the leading news headlines, popular song lyrics, or storyline of top television shows and movies will remind you that our culture does not take God seriously. 
As a nation, we overlook, tolerate, and excuse sin at almost every level of society. Amen. Those who are confronted for their immorality and disobedience to God flip the conversation and blame anything and everyone but themselves. The mm. easy tolerance of sin makes matters worse because society's moral standards have drifted so far from God's word, and many people seem to be completely, completely ignorant of what is right. Across thousands of years, God's word to his people in captivity remains relevant today. Your response to God will determine your destiny. Amen. All right. Close in prayer. Dear God, we confess and take responsibility for our sin. Forgive us and cleanse our hearts and minds of the tendency to disobey your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to thank everyone for tuning in on Facebook Live this morning and and I want to definitely thank the one that's in the Zoom room. We have had a wonderful lesson this Amen. morning talking about taking responsibility. And I, hope, I know we learned taking responsibility. I hope we learned something. Well, all of us learned something that we yeah. got to take the responsibility of what we do. Not that's it. Nobody, quit playing the blame game. Amen. It's me. I Amen. caused the problem. It's me. Right. It's me. Uh, I did this. It's me. Quit trying to hide behind other mm -hmm. people and take the blame. If you did it, take the blame. Mm -hmm. Take the blame. Amen. So that's what we had to listen to. So thank y'all for tuning in. And I'm um, just saying we will see y'all at church uh, in a few minutes. And please go to the church of your choice. Until next Sunday, stay blessed. Amen. Amen. Amen.